Hi, I'm Karen Wessel from World Editions, and I'm here to talk to you about a very important book, which we will publish uh, very soon in April 2021. This book, October Child by the Swedish author Linda Bostrom Knausgaard. Uh, we recently published two novels by the same author, uh, Welcome to America, which is uh, a beautiful, um, intense, shocking story of a young girl who at some point stops speaking and then refuses to speak, and which was also loosely based on uh, the author's experiences uh, in her own childhood. And um, the other novel is Helios Disaster, which is a very poetic, very lyrical uh, and powerful exploration of mental illness, uh, but also a novel. In this book, uh, October Child, is more openly autobiographical. It is a, it is a literary memoir um, Linda Bostrom Knausgaard was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when she was uh, around 24, and she has also suffered long periods of uh, very deep depression uh, since that period. And the period that she describes in this memoir uh, is mostly between 2013 and 2017, uh, while she was also divorcing from her husband, uh, Karl Owe Knausgaard. And while she was forced to undergo treatment for her deep depression in a psychiatric institution, and while she was forced to um, undergo a long series of electroconvulsive therapy, of electroshocks. Um, electroshocks are uh, believed to uh, reset the mind, to, they, that they can, some doctors and some scientists think. Uh, that they can cure certain mental illnesses. And even though it's banned in maybe most countries, uh, it's still very popular in most Scandinavian countries and, and in some other parts in the world, including in some states in the United States. And uh, well, not very popular, it's, it's, con uh, it's controversial, but it is used. And, um, and uh, so uh, the author, as she describes in this memoir, she was very worried about one of the most common uh, side effects, which is memory loss. She, she wondered how, you know, uh, what will happen to my identity if I lose my memory and how can I, uh, yeah, my, my personal identity. And as a writer also, how can I write if I lose my, my memories? And the doctor, some doctor said, well, you can just make it up if you're a writer. Isn't that what writers do? And um, and so she describes also these uh, the whole awful procedure of uh, being put to sleep and before uh, the electroshocks and, and and the waking up in those rooms and where everybody who wakes up screams and um, it is a, really a, an awful environment. So this this book is also very much. Um, a description of her struggle against uh, abusive, coercive, uh, institutional power, uh, and uh, she is trying to reassert her individual power against that. And she is struggling to uh, to keep her memory, to keep her uh, the relationship to her four young children, uh, who were then living with the father and who she was not seeing, and. Um, uh, and to deal with her uh, self-blame and guilt and, uh, and shame about her depression and about uh, what she had done. She had tried to commit suicide when she was pregnant with the fourth child. Um, she had been in a very bad place and she had to come to terms with that in some way and to fight to, fight to get out of that uh, institution and to, to pick up your life again and your relationship with your children. And eventually she succeeds in doing that. So she is uh, at the same time uh, extremely vulnerable and extremely strong. And uh, that's what makes her story so, um, so gripping and so intense. And uh, as we know from her, she is a very talented author and her style is also very beautiful. There, there are a lot of metaphors like when uh, the anesthesiologist um, Put her to sleep before before the shock therapy, uh, and she gets the anesthesia in her in her blood vessels. She describes that it, it was like drinking darkness. So there's all this um, poetic and metaphorical language in the book, which makes it um, 
very beautiful to read and uh, which I find also one of the most interesting aspects uh, of her writing. Um, this There's some sort of a, um, a boundlessness, in uh, an intense boundlessness in her thinking and in her writing. And uh, it feels a little bit like uh, how you experience a dream. Reading her, her language, her prose, is like undergoing a dream. And I think that's very beautiful. I hope uh, that you will all read this book when it comes out in April 2021. Thank you.